Hey guys, summer is in full swing and one of my favorite ways to celebrate the season is to pack a picnic and head outdoors. I'm gonna show you the perfect menu for a romantic picnic for two that will surely impress that special someone in your life. We're going to kick things off with my simple recipe for homemade iced tea. Then I'll show you how to make a delicious gazpacho soup packed with vegetables and served with my homemade cheddar dill biscuit. Then it's grilled flank steak sandwiches with caramelized onions served with a summery pesto salad. And for dessert, it's my cherry almond turnovers that just scream summer in every little bite. If you like the looks of this menu, you can also subscribe to my own channel, Entertaining with Beth, where each week I'll show you easy recipes, elegant enough for entertaining, but simple enough for a weeknight meal. If you ask me, the secret to a great picnic is to actually pick food that transports well. There's nothing worse than getting to your destination only to find that your picnic has arrived in shambles. So in addition to showing you how to make all of these recipes, I'm also going to show you how to package them up. And then at the end, during my game plan, I'll show you how to put it all together in your picnic basket so that when you get to your picnic destination, everything will be intact. I love the idea of making iced tea from scratch because it's so easy to do. If you end up buying your iced tea in the store, chances are it can be filled with a lot of sweeteners, artificial coloring, and sometimes even preservatives. If you make your iced tea, you can choose basically any flavor you want and you can control the amount of sugar you put into it. Two good reasons for me. The first thing you wanna do is pick your thermos. The thermos is important because it's gonna keep your drinks nice and cold during your picnic and alleviate having to pack a lot of ice. Recently, I just bought this great thermos online. I have to admit, I picked it because I liked the looks of it. It had this kind of cool vintage vibe to it and it was a nice bright red color, which is a color scheme I really love for a picnic. But when it arrived in the mail, it was so sturdy and it actually has this little logo on it that says built for life. So you get a lifetime warranty. The other thing about this thermos that I love is it actually will keep beverages hot or cold for 24 hours. At first, I have to admit, I was a little suspect, but I tried it and it worked. So if you wanna hook yourself up with a little treat for your summertime picnic, go get yourself one of these thermoses. They're really pretty awesome. Now, I promise I don't have any affiliation with this company. I actually reached out to them to say, hey, can I feature your thermos? Just because I think it's great. So as we go through, you'll see there'll be a couple other products that I've integrated into this episode. There's no affiliation with any of these brands. They're just great products that I think will make for a really stylish and fun picnic. So the links are in the description if you wanna know where to get them. So the first thing you wanna do is find out how much liquid your thermos actually holds. And that's how much tea you wanna make. So mine holds about 1.4 quarts of liquid. So it's really easy if you use a little Pyrex pitcher because it'll basically tell you the measurement right there. So you wanna go ahead and get your water boiling. Meanwhile, you can select your tea. Now you really can choose any kind of tea you like. For summertime, I really love a nice hibiscus tea just because the color is beautiful, it has a nice fruity taste to it, and it's caffeine free. But really any tea will work. You wanna take one tea bag per cup of water. And then you wanna go ahead and place your tea bags in a heat safe container, pour your hot water, then add about two tablespoons of honey and a fresh sprig of mint. Now, if you don't like your tea that sweet, you could add one tablespoon of honey, or if you like it sweeter, you could add three. It's really up to you. Then you're gonna gently stir your tea and let it steep for about five to 10 minutes. Now, it really just depends on strength. If you like a nice strong tea, you could go 10 minutes plus. If you don't like it as strong, again, you don't have to go as long. Then you're gonna fish out the tea bag and the mint, and then you're gonna transfer your tea into some type of heat safe carafe. You really wanna cool it down before you put it in your thermos. Otherwise, it's gonna keep your tea hot and not cold. So what I will typically do is make my tea the day before, pour it into my heat safe carafe, pop that in the fridge, and then the morning of actually take the tea and transfer it to my thermos. That way I know that my tea is nice and cold and will stay cold for the duration of my picnic. And then the way that I like to serve this tea, because the thermos only comes with one little cup, is to actually pack those little jam jars. You see them in the grocery store near like the mason jars and all the canning supplies. I like them because they're eight ounces, so it's the perfect serving for a glass of iced tea. And they have those little like cut details to it, so it almost looks like a poor man's cut crystal. Then what I'll do is I'll slice a little bit of lemon, pop it in the jar, twist on the top, and then that way when I get to my picnic, all I have to do is open the jar and pour the iced tea. And the lemon is right there ready to go. 
And that's all there is to it. Homemade iced tea is delicious, it's refreshing, and I promise it'll be 10 times better than what you may end up buying at the store. Okay, so now for our first course, our gazpacho soup. If you're not familiar with gazpacho soup, it is a cold tomato soup that's very popular in the summertime that originated in Spain. I love it because it's refreshing, it's cool, and it's packed with vegetables. And the best thing is, it is the easiest thing to make. All you basically do is whirl up a bunch of your favorite vegetables in a blender. How easy is that? So the first thing we're gonna do is start with our tomatoes. What I like to do is take two cups of red tomatoes, and then one cup of yellow tomatoes. I like the combination because it just makes for a very pretty soup, but if you can't find the yellow tomatoes, you could also just do all red. That would be fine too. Then you're gonna add some white onion and some bell peppers. Then we're gonna also add some cucumber and two garlic cloves. Now I do like to have the garlic already minced before it goes in the blender. That way you just make sure that the garlic, which is pretty strong, is well dispersed before you go ahead and blend it. So now for the seasonings. You're gonna add a few dashes of your favorite hot sauce. I like gazpacho soup to have a little bit of a kick, so I'll add about four or five dashes. But if you don't like it as spicy, you could go with like two or three, be perfect. Then you're gonna add some red wine vinegar, some olive oil, and about a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of freshly cracked pepper. Then you're also gonna add some flat leaf parsley, and then you're gonna whirl the whole thing up in your blender until it's nicely pureed and smooth. And that's it, your soup is basically done. So what I will do is I usually will make this the day before, just because it gives a nice 24 hour period for all of those flavors to marry and come together. So I'll transfer the soup into a nice airtight container and pop it in the fridge. Then the morning of, I will transfer the soup into some nice little mason jars. I will then give it a drizzle of olive oil, some diced radish, and some diced cucumber. Now, yes, these garnishes are not gonna be perfectly intact when you get to your picnic, but what's nice about it is when you eat the soup, which is pretty pureed, you'll also get these nice chunks of radish and cucumber and a little bit of the olive oil, and it just makes for a really winning combination. And then when it comes to presentation, I do like to take a little bit of effort here and there to just make everything look pretty. Especially if this is a romantic picnic with someone you're trying to impress, taking that little extra effort can make all the difference. So I love a classic color combination of red and white when it comes to a picnic. It's just so classic and really looks fresh and summery. Go ahead and take a nice red and white ribbon, tie it around your mason jar, and fashion it into a nice bow. That way, when you pull out your soup and you start your first course, you've kind of set things off on a right tone. And then if you really want to get fancy, another thing that I like to do is to pack a little mini pepper grinder. That way, when you actually go and serve your soup, you undo the lids, you can offer your guests some freshly cracked pepper. So there you have it, gazpacho soup. It's easy, it's refreshing, and it is so delicious, especially this time of year when tomatoes are at their peak. It is really the perfect thing to kick off your summertime picnic. Now the perfect thing to go with our gazpacho soup is a homemade cheddar dill biscuit. Now this time of year when it's hot and it's the summertime and we're all running around enjoying the outdoors, the last thing I wanna do is break out the food processor and break out the rolling pin. That's why I like this recipe. You can mix the dough with your hands and then we're just gonna dollop the dough onto our cookie sheet with a big old spoon. No rolling pins necessary. So you're first gonna preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Then in a large bowl, we're going to add some flour, some baking powder, some baking soda, some salt, and some cayenne pepper. Now I love the combination of dill and cheese and cayenne pepper, just because it gives these biscuits a little bit of a kick, but if you don't like spice, you could completely leave it out or just reduce it by half. So you're gonna go ahead and whisk that mixture up with a fork and then set it aside. Now the secret to not having to use a food processor with this recipe is to make sure your butter is nicely diced before you begin. So you wanna make sure that that butter is nice and cold, then go ahead and cut it in half, cut your halves into half, and then cut those into quarters. Then you're gonna go ahead and dice it into little cubes. The smaller your butter is, the easier it's gonna to be to work into your flour mixture without having to break out the food processor. So go ahead and just work that flour into your butter 
all the while just creating more and more like a coarse meal. And then when it gets to the point where it looks like a coarse meal, then you can stop. Then you're gonna go ahead and add your sharp cheddar cheese. I like the sharp cheddar over the mild cheddar because you're gonna get a lot more flavor with the sharp. But if you can't find the sharp, the mild will still work. You just won't get as cheesy a flavor. Then you're gonna add your dill. For me, I think the best way to cut dill is really with a pair of kitchen shears. <laughs> that way you'll end up with really nice diced pieces and you won't have to worry about having to chop it all by hand. So go ahead and give that a good stir with your fork and then you're going to add your milk. You're slowly gonna add the milk to the mixture, stirring all the while with your fork and you'll see you'll start to have a really nice dough develop. Now here's the easiest part of this recipe. You're gonna take a nice big kitchen spoon, portion out a dollop of the dough, and go ahead and place it on your cookie sheet. Give them a little bit of space because they will spread out a bit. Then you're gonna bake for anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes just until your biscuits are nicely golden brown on top and a little bit golden brown on the bottom as well. So go ahead and take them out of the oven and then you can transfer them to a cooling rack to cool. Now to package them up, I love to use those clear little treat bags. So I'll put maybe three or four biscuits in a bag and then tie them up with a bright red bow. Now you really wanna make sure that your biscuits are completely cool before you do this, because what can happen if they're still warm, condensation will form on the inside of that bag, and that is gonna give you a soggy biscuit. No one likes a soggy biscuit, so go ahead and make sure that they're completely cool before you do that. So there you have it, homemade biscuits without the need for a food processor or a rolling pin. And believe me, when you pull out these homemade biscuits from your little picnic basket, your special guest will be completely impressed, I promise. Now for the main course, grilled flank steak sandwiches. I love the idea of a sandwich for a picnic because it just makes eating them so much easier, especially when you're sitting on the ground and having a good time. I love the idea of flank steak because when you carve it, if you carve it correctly, and I'm gonna show you how to do it, it can actually be really tender and make for a great sandwich. Now there are a few components to this recipe, I will warn you, but none of it is hard and it can all be done the day before as well. Now the first thing we're gonna do is marinate our flank steak. Now flank steak as a meat can be tough, so you wanna make sure that you give it a good marinade, at least for 24 hours, just to break down that muscle and make it nice and tender. So in a large Pyrex dish, you're gonna take some balsamic vinegar, some olive oil, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, some Dijon mustard, whisk that all up just to combine, and then you're gonna add some rosemary, some garlic, some peppercorns, and salt. Then you're gonna place your meat in the marinade and just coat it on all sides, making sure that all the marinade is getting into all the nooks and crannies of the meat, and then cover it and refrigerate it. You wanna marinate that meat for at least 24 hours. I really think that's the best amount of time, but if you don't have that kind of time, one to two hours will do the trick. Then you can get on with caramelizing your onions. So in a large skillet, you're gonna add some olive oil, some red sliced onions, and a little bit of salt. Go ahead and just saute those, stirring them all the while, just until they start to get translucent and a little bit brown on the bottom. Then you're gonna go ahead and add some balsamic vinegar, and just keep cooking and stirring until all that vinegar is basically evaporated and soaked into the onions. This whole process could take as long as 10 to 20 minutes, but it really is worth it. The caramelized onions and the meat together is such a great combination, and you really just wanna make sure that those onions are really cooked down and well caramelized before you pull them off. Then you're gonna transfer them into an airtight container and pop in the fridge. Then the third component to this is a horseradish vinaigrette. This is going to be the sandwich spread for our sandwiches. I love the idea of a vinaigrette on a sandwich for a picnic because it just tends to work a little bit better than having mayonnaise or something that might go bad a lot quicker. So in a small bowl, you're going to add some prepared horseradish. Make sure you get just the prepared horseradish and not the horseradish sauce. That's usually next to the horseradish and it's something else. You just want the raw prepared horseradish. Then you're gonna add some Dijon mustard, a little bit of red wine vinegar, and then stir that all up to combine. Then you're slowly gonna add your olive oil, whisking all the while, just so that you're creating a nice emulsified vinaigrette. 
Then you're gonna add some freshly snipped chives. And the best way to cut a chive is just with a pair of kitchen shears. It's quick, it's easy, and you'll end up with equal sized pieces. And then you're gonna season with a little salt and pepper to taste. And that's it, your sandwich spread is done. All you need to do is just cover it and pop in the fridge until you're ready to assemble your sandwiches. Now it's time to grill our steak. You can do this on an outdoor barbecue or you can do it indoors with a grill pan. One little tip before you grill your steak, you wanna actually wipe off all of that excess marinade that has collected onto the meat. Not to worry, your steak is still gonna be flavorful. Remember, it's been marinating for one to two hours or maybe even overnight, so it's packed with flavor. But if you take that steak that's filled with marinade and put it on a hot grill, it's gonna just burn right up and make a big mess. So go ahead and just wipe it off with a paper towel. Then you wanna season both sides with some salt and pepper, and then before you put it on the grill, make sure your grill has been well oiled. This is important, especially since we've used a marinade that has a lot of balsamic vinegar in it. And there's a lot of sugar in that balsamic vinegar and it'll stick really easily to that grill if it's not nicely greased. So go ahead and make sure with a paper towel that you have actually greased your grill beforehand. Then you're gonna cook for about four to five minutes on each side. That will give you a medium rare steak, which I think is the perfect doneness for flank steak. Then when your steak is done, you wanna go ahead and place it on a cutting board and cover it with some foil. It's really important that you let your meat rest for at least 10 to 15 minutes before cutting into it. If you cut into it right away, all of those juices are gonna spill out and you're gonna end up with a dried piece of meat. So definitely take the time to let it rest. Now here's the other thing to know about flank steak. It's all about how you cut it. So if you look at your piece of meat, you will notice there are grains that are visible in the cut. You don't wanna cut this meat with the grain. If you cut it with the grain, you're gonna end up with a rubbery, tough piece of meat. The secret is you wanna cut it against the grain. That way, you will end up with the most tender, flavorful piece of meat. So go ahead and take your knife and cut it on an angle, what they call cutting on the bias. That too is going to give you a nice, tender cut of meat. So go ahead and cut thin slices all the way up your cut of meat and you will end up with a nice pile of thinly sliced meat that'll be tender, juicy, and delicious. Okay, now it is time to assemble our sandwiches. So when it comes to bread, I love a ciabatta roll. I just think they're delicious, they're rustic, and they look so pretty too. So we're gonna cut them in half and lightly toast them. If you don't have a toaster oven, you can just put them on a sheet pan and pop them under the broiler for about 30 seconds to a minute. You just wanna keep your eye on it because bread burns really quickly when you toast it this way. Then you're going to spread your horseradish vinaigrette on both sides of the bread. And then on the bottom half, you're gonna layer up your steak, add your caramelized onions, and then top with arugula. And you will have one gorgeous looking sandwich. Now, to package up our steak sandwiches, I really love the idea of using a decorative wax paper. You can find these at either party stores or craft stores or even sometimes restaurant supply. Here's my technique for wrapping it up. You can take your sandwich and put it at the corner of your square. Then you're going to wrap and roll all the way down the end of the paper. And then when you get near the end, you're gonna take each end, fold them inward, and do one final roll. Then you can affix it with a little bit of tape at the bottom. And presto, you will have one decorative looking sandwich waiting for your special guest. The perfect thing to go with our steak sandwiches is a homemade pesto salad. I love pesto salad because it just screams summer to me. It's delicious, it's fresh, and if you have somebody who doesn't eat meat, it also can make for a great main course. You really can use any pasta you like, but I tend to like the fusilli for this recipe. Those are the ones that look like the little corkscrew because it really allows the pesto to adhere to the pasta so that the pesto ends up in all those little nooks and crannies, which gives you great flavor in every bite. Now we are going to roast our vegetables. I love to use a selection of summer vegetables because they are all at their peak right now, like zucchini and peppers, and roasting them is just gonna bring out their best flavor. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna combine some zucchini, some red and orange bell pepper, and some red onion. Go ahead and give them a good toss with some olive oil. You can do this just right on the sheet pan. And then you're gonna season with a little salt and pepper. Go ahead and roast for about 15 minutes. And you don't even need to turn them. In fact, it's even better to just let them sit right where they are and roast for 15 minutes because that is going to allow for all of those vegetables to get a nice char on them. And that's what we want. Then we're gonna take them out and set them aside and allow them to cool. 
And meanwhile, we are going to make our homemade pesto sauce. Now for homemade pesto, you really do need to drag out the food processor. We're going to add two cups of fresh basil, some garlic, our pine nuts, and salt and pepper. Go ahead and give that a whirl just until all of that basil is finely minced. Then we're slowly going to add our olive oil while the machine is running just until it starts to really emulsify and become a smooth, creamy texture. Then you can stop the machine, take out the blade, and then you're going to add your freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And then the final step is just to toss your pesto with your pasta just until all that pasta is well coated, and then go ahead and add your vegetables. Give it a good toss, and that's it. Your pesto salad is done. Then when it comes time to packaging it up, I love to use those little white to-go containers that you can find at those restaurant supply stores that are open to the public. The reason I like to use these is because they're so lightweight, so they're not gonna add a lot of heaviness to your picnic basket. And there you have it. I love this salad because it makes for such a wonderful little side dish to those steak sandwiches. It's summery, it's delicious, it's healthy because it's loaded with vegetables, and it just makes the perfect accompaniment to your summertime picnic. Now, we've put a little bit of effort into putting this menu together. So I wanted to make sure that dessert would be easy for you guys to accomplish. And when I think of picnics, especially in the summertime, for some reason, I can't help but think of those little cherry pies. It seems to be what you always see the cartoon characters have when they have a picnic, but who's gonna take the time to make a cherry pie? However, we could take some time to make a cherry turnover instead, and they couldn't be easier to do. Here's how you make it. So you're gonna start with some cherries. Now, if you ask me, I think frozen cherries are the best invention of the last couple of years because you don't have to pit them. But this recipe still works if you wanna use fresh cherries. If you can't find the frozen, you're just gonna have to pit them yourself, which you can do, just takes a little time. You're gonna toss your cherries with some sugar, a little bit of flour, and some almond extract. Then you are gonna roll out some store-bought puff pastry onto a lightly floured surface. And then you're gonna cut four inch rectangles. You're gonna transfer the rectangles onto a parchment lined cookie sheet, and then add about two tablespoons of your cherry mixture in the center. You're then gonna take an egg wash, which is essentially just egg yolk mixed with a little bit of water, and brush it around the perimeter of your rectangle. That's actually going to be our glue that's going to keep our turnover together. You're then gonna fold the puff pastry over to one side, and then press it all the way along the seam. Then for some added security, just so that all of your cherry juice doesn't spill out everywhere, you're going to take a fork that has been dipped in flour and just go ahead and press it along the sides of the seam. It does look pretty, and unfortunately when the puff pastry bakes, you're not gonna see this little detail. It's really more just to adhere it. You're then gonna brush the tops with your egg wash and then add some sliced raw almonds. You're then gonna pop them in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes, just until they're golden brown and puffed up. Then go ahead and let them cool completely. Now to package them up, I love to use those clear little treat bags. And that's your dessert, how easy is that? It's festive, it's delicious, and they are the perfect summertime treat. So if you'd like to make this summertime picnic for somebody special in your life, here's your game plan. The day before the picnic, you can make your iced tea, cool and refrigerate. You can make the gazpacho soup, transfer it to an airtight container, and also keep in the fridge. Then make the pesto salad and keep that refrigerated as well. Make the marinade for the steak and marinate overnight. You can then caramelize the onions, cover and refrigerate, and you can make your horseradish spread, cover and keep that refrigerated as well. The morning of, you can make your biscuits, allow them to cool completely, and then package them up. You can then grill your steak, allow it to rest and cool, carve and assemble your sandwiches. You can then make your turnovers and allow them to cool completely. Keep them at room temperature until you're ready to package them up. Okay, so here's the most important part. How do you package all of this up? Now, when it comes to picnics, I am a bit of a hopeless romantic, and I do like to use a traditional picnic basket. But if you don't have one, you could also just put this all in a cooler or a bag packed with some ice pack. That would work as well, too. 
To pack our basket, we are first going to line it with some ice packs. I like these better than ice because they take less space and they don't leak. Then, place everything that should be kept cool on top. It really works better if all of your containers are roughly the same height. Then, place your napkins over to one side. It will provide a nice cushion for your glass jars. Anything that's fragile can be rolled up in your dish towel. That will prevent it from breaking. The most fragile items should be placed on top, like your turnovers and your biscuits. That will prevent them from getting squished. Then you can place your chargers and your paper plates on top. And there you go, your picnic basket is ready. Now when it comes to setting the scene, I do like to take a little bit of effort and pack some decor items, just to create an elegant setting for this elegant menu that we've spent all this time making. I love to use a large bedspread. I feel that they work better than a blanket because you're just gonna get more space. And I find some of those heavy quilts work really well. And you can find them at many of those large bed and bath stores pretty inexpensively. Then I also like to pack some pillows. Not only are they fun to sit on, but they're also good to kind of rest your back on. Because when you're sitting down and you're eating a meal, you do need something kind of comfy and squishy just to kind of support your back. Then I will use the picnic basket as a little table. I'll set it out and then place a dish towel on top. There are a lot of really wonderful looking dish towels that you can get at restaurant supply stores that actually look like little tablecloths. They're inexpensive and you know you're gonna use them again. Then for the plates, I do like to use paper plates just because they're lighter and it's hard to sometimes carry around real plates for a picnic. But I like to make them a little bit more festive and fancy by using the little basket chargers. They're inexpensive and you can find them online for just a few bucks. Then your paper plates will fit inside and it'll just provide a more sturdy surface for your guests to eat off of. When it comes to silverware and napkins, I do like to use real silverware just because it's lightweight and it just makes for a more elegant picnic but go ahead and roll it up in a kitchen towel. You can find brand new kitchen towels for just a few bucks, and it does make for a nice, good-sized napkin. And then remember, you'll have your little jam jars for your iced tea. And so when your guest arrives and you're ready to set out the picnic, you'll have one romantic little scene waiting for him or her. So there you have it, my romantic summertime picnic for two. I hope you guys give this one a try with someone special in your life. And I'll see you back here next month when I'm gonna show you how to put together a beautiful, gluten-free, dairy-free menu that was inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, Megan Rosette. I'll see you then.